you expected the divine to come through for you in a specific way. And he didn't. She didn't. It didn't. And now you feel betrayed. You feel disappointed. You've spent your, well, quite a big chunk of your life listening to the, 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 the promises, the dogma, reading the, the spiritual text, um, taking in all of these ideas of how the divine is supposed to show up. But then one day you woke up and you looked at your life and you realized this doesn't look like anything like I expected it to, even though I've given everything to it. And you might still be going through the motions. Or you have given up altogether and you feel betrayed. Hey, I'm Rosemary Nonny Knight. I am the Money Minister. I work with action-oriented spiritual people who know they're meant for more. But for whatever reason, you haven't achieved that more yet. You're under-earning. You're underachieving, And yet, there's a part of you that knows there's so much more available to you and you want to figure out what is getting in the way. And you want to build a life that makes a difference and creates a six-figure or more income living in your true design. The thing about being upset or feeling betrayed or abandoned by the divine is that for you, as a spiritual person, whether, whether you admit to it now or not, it's too important to you. It's so important to you that you will not allow yourself to prosper without sorting this side of you out. It feels like there is no life without that connection with the divine. So though you feel betrayed, whether you're admitting to it or not, there's a block inside of you, which means that you do not allow yourself to create wealth, to make, even make the difference that you're here to make. You're not even sure that you're worthy because there's a part of you that thinks that as the divine didn't show up in the way that you expected, that there might, there might be something wrong with you because there's a part of you that can't completely blame the divine because you're still under the yoke. I would say the, the bondage of religious thinking probably um, that says you cannot be upset with the divine. You are not allowed to question the divine. You have to just put up with whatever, be used by the divine. Use me, Jesus, use me. And all of that kind of stuff. Where you, So you feel as though if there's an issue, the issue is you. Now, I'm, I, I recognize that the divine, you know, is, is all-knowing, all-powerful. You know, it's the, the thing bigger than us. However, what, however you position this. But I also recognize this. You're allowed to question things. And in fact, you must question what you're believing if it's getting in the way of you actually having a real intimate connection with the divine because this connection is too important for you to, to pretend that you're okay. And I see so many, particularly religious people, even spiritual people, you... You're pretending that there's, that, that, that there's intimacy between you and the divine. And instead of questioning why you feel betrayed because a certain manifestation didn't come together in the way that you expected. And in fact, life might have fallen apart. I still remember like my, when my dad died. I was in my early 20s at this point. And, and, and I remember walking away from church for, well, I was only about two weeks or so. But I did because I felt so conflicted inside of me about how my dad had died and the accident that had resulted in him having um, been unable to walk from since I was about six or seven and, and all of this stuff. I'm feeling as though, where the frick were you divine in the midst of all of these, these dramas in my life? And now my dad has died. I haven't had time to handle my issues with him. I just feel so confused. I, and this is not supposed to happen to me because I know you, divine. I know you. And you're supposed to keep me safe from these things. And yet somehow I'm going through this nonsense and feeling so hopeless. Where the frick are you? And so for a season there, I just, I didn't want to have anything to do with the divine because it felt like 
if he's not going to keep me safe from these hurts, why am I even, why do I even care to connect with you? What's the benefit? And I know that was immature thinking in some ways, but at least I had the courage to face it. I still remember actually going to see a counselor and saying, it feels even worse because I know the divine. And I feel like this should not have happened to me. And he, well, he was a counselor, he was just listening to me. But I, okay, it took me about two weeks and I realized, well, I have nowhere else to go. Who am I going to, who, who can I talk to except the divine about how I'm feeling? So fine, I may be angry with you, but I have to talk to you anyway. And so I kind of went back to church and everything. But since then, I've come a long way from there to recognizing that sometimes the manifestation of what I desire doesn't look the way I expected it to, but that my, all my prayers are always answered. I just sometimes don't always know what I'm praying for. And I would say the same to you. And this is not to make excuses for the divine because you have to have that actual conversation with the divine. You, the, you, you, you can have that conversation with the divine. You can be upset and angry and talk it out and, you know, yell at the heavens. You can do all of that stuff. And in fact, I would say you must stop pretending to be so super spiritual that you never feel betrayed and disappointed in the way life plays out. Actually, talk through this stuff because it is blocking your ability to prosper. You will not because it is too important to you to allow yourself to prosper without that connection. In some ways, it sometimes feels like people who do not believe like we do get it easier because they don't have all of this conflict going on inside of them. But you know what? We get the opportunity to live a really free, fulfilled, financially abundant, love-drenched life because we know our source. This isn't some religious come to Jesus kind of thing. It's just the recognition that we are, we're more than just flesh and blood. We need to feel one with the more, the everything, the infinite intelligence. And it's only as we come into that oneness, that connection, that falling in love with the divine, we fall in love with ourselves as well because we recognize we are created in the image and likeness of the divine. We are one with the divine. And if there's anything inside of us that feels conflict with the divine, and feels resentful, betrayed, handle it. Don't be scared to handle it. Don't think you're going to be sent to hell because you questioned something. Question everything, knowing that truth stands up to scrutiny. You don't have to be afraid to say how you feel. It is too important for you not to say it. And the divine sees and feels anyway. And don't you understand that you're blocking something inside of you which then means you can't make the six-figure income you want, not in the way that you want to. You'll be selling your soul possibly to make money or your relationships will break down or you just feel dead inside. Your life is too precious for you to continue to pretend that things are okay inside of you when they're not. Sit down with the divine. Talk this stuff through, even if it feels like I don't even believe you're there anymore. Because I've had that where I sit, I literally sit with my journal and saying, I don't even know if you're there. Am I just making this up? And I sit down and it's like, yeah, I know it's kind of crazy that I'm talking to you saying that I don't think you're there. <laughs> but let's talk anyway. And out of that comes healing. Out of that comes a deep sense of knowing who I am and who the divine is to me. Now it looks different to everyone. So as I said, this isn't a religious thing. To me, it's pragmatic. As a spiritual person, we need this connection. And so you do whatever it is to keep the connection clear. Okay. Now I want to invite you to get a copy of four of my books. I've put them together into a collection because I realized that this is, this is the deliberate millionaire path to peace and plenty or peace, purpose, and prosperity. Peace, purpose, and a six-figure income or more. Peace, because there's so much noise, nonsense, and drama that gets in the way. Purpose, because unless you're living in your true design, you can't feel peaceful. You can't truly prosper. And then, of course, a six-figure income, because, honey, money helps with freedom, you know? 
It gives you choices, allows you to make the difference, reach the people that you want to reach, support the causes that mean something to you and enjoy your freaking life. <laughs> okay. So the deliberate millionaire path takes you to peace, to purpose, to a six figure income or more or prosperity. And I've put these four books together because they talk through my journey. They give you exercises. And I realized that these four books, the Spirit Speaks book, Find and Fulfill Your Life's Purpose, the Confidence book, Handle Self-Doubt, the Faith book, Rebuild That Ability to Manifest the Things That You Desire, the, which one? Freedom! Oh, stop living for the weekend. Start doing what you're here born to do. If you go through those four books, you will understand, one, the Deliberate Millionaire Pathway. But you know what? It's not even about that. It's about you getting to live the life that you desire. Everything that I do here is to enable driven, action-oriented, spiritual people to step up and live into their true design life. Because I know that as each one of us starts to own who we are, the impact that we will have on this planet will change the world. Too many spiritual people are too are living lives of quiet des desperation. When we know who, when we know we're connected to the source of all, our lives are supposed to be examples of what is possible. And so these four books that I put together in this collection, for, I, please, please go and get them, read them. If there's a part of you that's been feeling like, you know what? I'm not earning what I think I should be earning. I'm not achieving the things I know I'm capable of. My life feels as if it's tick, tick, talking away and I'm not getting anywhere. And I know that I'm born and meant for more. Get the books. Invest two hours of your life reading them. It will change your life. It will change the way you start to see things. And you will elevate is all I can say. It's time for you to start your transformational journey. It's time. You know it. There's no more time to live the wrong life, as one of my coaches used to say. And it's the truth. Go get the books. The link will be around this video. Much amazing love.